Let's go. Two months after our season finished at Kenilworth Road, we were back in the first game of preseason on a day of a double header. First up at lunchtime was the game against South Shields, who are newly promoted to the National League North this season and managed by former Southern favourite Julio Arca. Mowbray decided to send out a mixed team looking for fitness and offering a chance for some of the fringe players from last year and the under-21s to get some minutes and experience. So what did we learn from this fixture? Well, with Triantis not yet training, Silt, Bath, Elise, Sirkin all injured, we looked little better than last season, with a back four made up of three midfielders in Gooch, Luco Nine and Dallas Taylor. Compton made up the back line at centre-half alongside Luco Nine. Midfield saw the return of Jane Matete alongside Pierre Equa with Clark and Lihaji on the wings and Samedo led the line in his debut with Abdullah Bar beginning the game in the 10 roll just behind him. If we can keep our attacking threat and tighten up at the back this season, not conceding as many, we should be a certainty for the playoffs. OK, well, let's forget that for the minute and get some minutes in the lads without picking up any injuries. Just kidding, there were no injuries. Let's just see what we can learn from the team Mowbray sent out of play today, shall we? In general, the first 15 minutes told us some things. Pato came into the defensive line very high, and the fullbacks were sent up into midfield, so it looks like this will be a tactic this coming season. It depends what the rest of preseason yields, but it was something he started doing at the end of last season, and it means that we can hopefully construct an overload in midfield a little easier. Players, though, did look rusty after two months off. Passes went astray. Runs were missed. This is to be expected, and they'll definitely improve as preseason continues over the next month. Compton looked good. He seemed to marshal the opposition well and put in a good amount of disrupting tackles. Signed from Shrewsbury under-18s last summer, he played over a thousand minutes in the Premier League 2 last season and has another four years left on his contract with us. Still only 19, he looks like he might turn into something good. Taylor at left back looked less accomplished. He went out on loan to Hartlepool last season and was sent back after four months and only four games by soon to be sacked manager Keith Curl, who confessed he didn't know where to play him. Well, today's outing took time for him as well. He started poorly and seemingly afraid to play, often showing some poor control and lacking progression on the ball, preferring to hit it back where it came from. At the end of the first half, though, he had a run and a cross, and in the second there was some more, but on the whole, he looked a little short on quality. Perhaps he was nervous. The first goal 
saw Taylor napping and losing his man whilst under no particular pressure. You can see here that he switches off. He doesn't mark the cutback and it's an easy tap in from a situation that he really should be controlling between the ball and the man. And the same for the second. Now, this goal is absolutely not his fault, but he does need to do better here. Stuck in no man's land again, Taylor neither steps in to make the early tackle and disrupt the man on the ball, nor does he track the runner behind. Now, arguably that's not his man, but his choices from here don't improve as the ball moves forward. He doesn't mark any of the cutbacks, finding himself having no impact on the proceedings, when he could and should do. Still, first run out and fullback isn't his position, I suppose. The Hadji started the game slowly, but much of the ball went out left in Clark's direction early on, so the Hadji had to grow into the game, and at the half-hour mark he started moving into the middle of the pitch and looking to receive the ball more. It duly came, and the Hadji consequently had more influence on proceedings, peeling off a shot from distance here. <laughs> then showing some excellent control that could have wanted a free kick or a foul here. He did earn one here. And in the second half, Lihaji continued to grow in influence, showing lots of close control. Popping up with a shot. And then a lovely cross for Semedo's goal in the equaliser. Semedo himself showed some good positional awareness and did little wrong all day. He proved willing to impose himself physically and notched a simple goal from Mahaji's cross. Hopefully we'll see more of him in the USA, because the word is that Ross Stewart is not going to be fit for the start of the season, so Semedo needs to get up to speed, unless another striker is signed before August 6th. Taylor's stilted performance in the first half caused Jack Clark to drop back a lot to collect the ball, and certainly our shape suffered as a result. Prove today, though, that he is still our hardest working player, moving from top to bottom of the pitch and back repeatedly in the game to collect the ball and press onwards. Here he is, tracking runners in a shield transition to easily outpace the opposition and clear up. Last season, there was some erroneous talk, in my opinion, of Clark not pulling his weight defensively, but followers of this channel will know that that is not true. And it was good to see him in the first round of the season, prepared to cover defensively as well as take on the running up front. Just before the hour mark, Equa put Gooch through to let him slide a ball to the back post and Clark knocked it in to make it 2 all. And then, Mowbray made life very difficult for watching fans with six substitutions, all from Sunderland's youth setup and all of them, thankfully, a like-for-like -like positional change. Adam Richardson, 19, came on for Anthony Patterson. Chris Rigg, just turned 16, replaced Pierre Equa. Michael Spellman, 20, who was loaned out to Blythe Spartans last season, came on up top for Luis Semedo. Trey Ogunsoyu came on for Isaac Lihaji. Ogunsoyu, despite being a physical giant, is only 16 years old. A local lad who grew up in Washington went to St. Robert's School. He was part of the under-15 side, along with Chris Rigg, that became national floodlit champions just over a year ago. Thomas Lavery, 17, came on for Ben Compton. Lavery played 18 times for Sunderland under-18s last season and was a core player in that side that pushed Manchester City right to the end for the title. And lastly, 19-year-old Connor Pye, signed from Morecambe under-18s last summer, came on to replace Ellis Taylor at left-back, despite his usual position being right-back. Pai made an instant difference at left-back, making better decisions defensively and marshalling his opponents better. And going forward, he was prepared to run with the ball and was generally more positive, allowing Clark to become a more attacking threat than Ellis Taylor had. <laughs> but 
But perhaps the most eye-catching of all these young subs was Trey Ogunsey. Playing right wing forward, he showed pace and aggression and almost instantly scored when he blistered the paint off the crossbar with this shot. Ogunsey proved aggressive as well, attacking the front post for a cross here, throwing his weight around. Remember, this kid is only 16. Rig was equally tenacious, and the hassling of both saw the ball drop to the industrious Abdullah Bar, who made space for Clark to slot home and made it 3-2 to Sunderland on the 72nd minute. Immediately after that goal, Mowbray sent on another five substitutes to mean that the game would finish with a Sunderland youth side entirely on the pitch for the last 20 minutes. Timur Tutiarov, 18, came on for Clark. Cuba Mitchell, 17, for Abdullah Bar. Mitchell came from Birmingham City Academy last summer and was almost certainly in the same team as Joe Bellingham before his move here a year ago. Marshall Burke, 18, replaced Matete. In midfield, Callum Beatty, 17, came on to replace Luko, 9. And finally, Ben Kingdon, 16, came on for Linda Gooch. Kinden is another local lad from Washington and St. Roberts in the same year as Ogun For the last 15 minutes or so, these youngsters did themselves reasonable credit. There were some straight passes and poor positioning, but they are very young. 12 minutes from time, Rig scythed in on a tackle. The lad gives no quarter, does he? You know, at times he reminds me of John Kay. Anyway, from the resultant free kick, Shields equalised. <laughs> can see a lack of experience here as Burke is swatted aside and there's no marking of the two station with Shields players in the box. Richardson parries and it's therefore an easy tap in for three all. They'll learn though. The young lads didn't fold however. Pye made a good run and... <laughs> Just look at this ball from Lavery I think and a great run from Morgan Say down the channel. cuts back well and that is a penalty but it wasn't given and as the match drew to a close Spellman stole the ball and danced to the far edge of the box to cross for Rig to slam home the winner and that was that a run out for lots of the lads no injuries and what we certainly did learn from this first game was that through a combination of homegrown talent and academy purchases, we have a pretty decent production line in the making. Speakman and Dreyfus have not simply been recruiting for the first team, but for beyond. Other than that, throw me a sub, ring the bell next to it, and you'll get an alert when the Gateshead review comes out, or follow me over on Twitter for the releases. See you next time.